Hi everyone, it's Ian from DIY Home and Gardening. 1st of September and I'm up the allotment for our, uh, well, start of the month walk around. So if I turn the camera around and we can have a look together. <laughs> First up, uh, bed finished, planted with a few more of the sort of more perennial bits. So uh, put in four rhubarb, um, two black currant bushes that came from the old allotment. Uh, they've not necessarily enjoyed the move, but uh, they should be fine come next year. Brought over the globe artichoke from home as well. So plenty of space in here. Uh, which will allow me to move these walking onions at some point over there. Peppers are doing okay. Um, as I said last time, they're not really grown as they did last year, but uh, certainly the fruits that have formed are starting to ripen, which is good. It means that it wasn't uh, a total waste. Um, Main crop potatoes, cut all the foliage down um, on those, Lo left the blue bell for the time being just because they went in at a later stage. But essentially these have finished doing their growing and just kind of waiting until get around to doing a bit of harvesting. You can see there's uh, a few potatoes to the surface there. But basically we'll lift those fairly soon. Uh, Jerusalem artichokes grown well now starting to show some flower let's uh, pull one of those down for you so that's what it looks like so same family as sunflower um, leeks they went in really late but uh, they are doing okay they will to be honest they'll be staying in all winter and they'll be lifted as next year um, had the block of edamame beans, which they were looking really good, and then came here at the start of last week to find that the, um, well, a rat or a couple of rats had literally eaten all of the uh, beans. So, pretty disappointing, but uh, on the positive, the stashman looks really nice. Uh, here, butternut squash, as you can see, have gone absolutely crazy some big ones forming off of the super sweet um, on the other variety which are hunter which are much smaller you can see they're starting to ripen now which is good definitely want some plants to ripen or fruits to ripen these fasalis i think to be honest are going to be a waste of time this year but uh you know Lesson learnt. Uh, the sweet potato growing nicely in terms of foliage, managing to kind of compete with the butternut squash. But um, whether there'll be much of a crop, I don't know. Uh, let's have a look at this. So, the brassica cage. Uh, some of the purple sprouting broccoli has started to bolt. But you know they can just be snipped off. Um, really, it's been a case of making sure I keep on top of pulling off the yellowing leaves, um, which essentially are forming from the base of the plants or the centres where they're not getting as much light. Uh, perpetual spinach there, the Cavallo Nero, still growing at a rate of knots, which is good. The um, Swiss chard and. Brussels, look at that, even with this covering on, there's still a cabbage white butterfly has got in there. Need to get that out. Uh, let's walk around this way. So this is the bed, gonna make a bit of a start on to tidy today. Um, so the squash are all ripening pretty nicely. So I'm thinking of cutting those off the vine likewise the mini pop sweet corn had most of them is the odd very small one left um, 
so they will come down as well you can see the powdery mildew is really taken hold on the courgette uh, which are well looking massive in places so not picked them for a few days um, sweet corn had some sweet corn the other day which was really tasty but there's some very big cobs forming here which is good you can see the tops have gone over so they're nice and viable sweet peas have kind of done their thing oh, that's another courgette there um, and turks turban again they're ripening up nicely so yeah it's just been a case of probably pull off some of these and have a general tidy uh, into the, this bed um, I put what did I put into there some radish so I've done a small block of radish which was basically uh, sort of last sowing of the season really on those Welsh onions doing all right pulled a load of celery might pull some more for making some celery soup this weekend but they are looking really good um, very pleased with how they've grown so next year might try my luck and uh, try and grow a, um, a different variety one that sort of blanches a little bit better or more self blanching see how that goes uh, this bed here or this little section of um, used up the last of the turnip seed so that really is a case of if they do okay then well we'll have turnips for the first time this season if they don't then that is the lot i won't be bothering with turnip anymore um let's show you the size of that there's a beetroot and some big old boys in there still doing their thing i'm leaving that one just to see how big we can get it really uh, it's not going to be probably that tasty but who knows um since taking out all the french beans that were kind of planted in the rows uh, the carrots have done really well they're bulking up quite nicely so they should be good onto this bed so the chrysanthemums so these are the different aloise varieties again this is well no i was going to say it has got some very tight bud in there whether it will actually make anything i don't know but those are all aloise types and then, uh, yeah, you've got Hannenberg, the size of that, it's lovely. Um, yeah, so that's that on there. Bed is still sitting empty of, of um, strawberries, but plan is to move those tomorrow. Now the family's back home, uh, can have a hand and get that done. Beans are still doing pretty well. I've had quite a lot of the runners off that. You can see there's some good size in there, but uh, they are not woody, which is nice. All the woody ones, well, I've not really had many woody ones this year, um, but any that have gone a bit over have been pretty ruthless and they've been going to the compost bin. Pumpkins, some decent sizing amongst that lot. I'm happy with that. Down to what is that? Um, yeah, giant dahlias. So they're looking all right. Uh, cut back this um, tomato because it was showing signs of blight. The other one. Well, I just got rid of it because it was uh, riddled with blight. So that's gone, opens it up a little bit. So far, um, Louis White's the only one that's sort of had flour and taken off the flour. So here, I need to do a bit of tidying up on, but we've got um, Cornell, so looking really good. And I've got to say, Cornell has been a miles better red and performer than boom boom red has been or was last year so moving forward i'm going to have cornell rather than boom boom um strangely enough 
one of the plants has reverted to this or sported to this I should say so this essentially is canal bronze so that'd be good so I'll make sure I label that and propagate from that so that give me two types of canal um, then we've got Mary Samanda which looking really good um, Haddon is it Haddon? yeah Haddon um, doing its thing um, Scam Cell Jane or Scamersdale Jane it's just started to pop out so that's quite nice but a bit late in the day for that got some really nice yeah that's also Scam's down there can't remember what I oh know it must be the same one just moved um, so Westerton Harry I'm not sure what that one is whether that's Westerton as well just small it must be that's also Westerton, just not doing so well. Um, have to have a look on that one. I never remember what that one is. Should be. Oh yeah, why not Jill? That's the one. Um, and then bright and soft to glean is these. And that is Rycroft Jill. So yeah, Rycroft's only just started flowering, but um, yeah, they're looking pretty good. So, had loads of cut flower from them, so that's been nice. But yeah, essentially, that is um, where we're at in terms of the allotment. It's just a case now of, say, doing a bit of tidying up. So, I'll get a bit, a bit tidier, and then uh, I'm gonna go home, finish the video up. So, to be honest, there's not a lot has changed in here from, uh, a couple of weeks ago other than I uh, did a really big uh, cucumber pick the other day which included um, a cucumber of 21 inches 53 centimeters but strangely enough I've got another melon forming which is ridiculous at this time of year so I've now got that little one one there so those two are from Minnesota Midget. There's another little one that's forming there. And then I've got that that I need to pick, well, essentially today, which is from Ogun. So that's those. Down to those few turmerics, because they've given some more away. The ginger and stevia. Um, and then, a couple of days ago, potted or put into these cell trays. So these are the little bulblets from the uh, Egyptian walking onions. So there's a, a few left there of the real diddy ones. And then these ones, so these ones I'm going to put into that size tray. So a bit bigger and then wait until they're growing. Let's get out here. So you can see peppers are doing nicely, some good sizes there. They've done really well in the container. And then really it's just wall to wall with tomato. So uh, we've picked four and a half kilos of tomatoes this week for uh, making soup. So you can see the odd one has got um, blossom end rot but you know look at these those are called gazzy so that's yellow beef steak and then these are the giant tree ones not so giant as last year but still looking pretty good in sizing uh, planted up into there that's all the Christmas potatoes so essentially the first early so that one there is Charlotte so 10 in a packet there for 3 dollars so I had these containers which are about a 15 litre pot so there's one in each pot um, papayas uh, suddenly just put on tremendous amount of growth 
selenium steel. Uh, got me um, cowsay onions, which I'm not really doing a lot to be honest. They just sit there until next year. More peppers, well, more chilies, and then you can see the red pointed. Oh no, these are beja. Yeah, so the bejas are now starting to ripen. Waiting on these, but you can see that actually the cold got into them the other night so that's caused a bit of rot um so they're doing their thing oh there's a big old weed there whip that out before that seeds he says um a few cuttings and then basil took a lot of basil off again this week for use in soups but uh, they're doing well and then these are some perennial kale that uh, I got as, um, well, I bought them as basically sticks. So, uh, yeah, I'm hoping that they will root through and start growing and then I'll have my own supply of that. So, really, that's where we're at for, uh, say, 1st of September. A bit of colour still around the place. Ginger's still doing its thing. Um, Tayberry that was across the back here. I'll grab that out, that's all gone. But yeah, looking all right. Uh, last but not least, well it is the least, so the grapes. Uh, you can see that thinning them definitely helps. Although there's a couple of little ditties there, so just want to pull out the odd one and I try to thin them so that you're removing alternate ones so they're sort of not touching that way you get a decent size grape form um, but yeah that is that's that so here's that end of uh, end of video again so thanks for watching hope um, well just hope you find it interesting really as I said before, other videos, it's always good to, to gauge how your season's going compared to mine and vice versa. And obviously if um, something I'm growing that you're not and you want to know a little bit about it, then please send a message and, uh, well, just just ask some questions. So, uh, yeah, let's say, hope you liked the video. If you do like what I'm doing, then please subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that reminder button so you don't miss out on the future videos I'm doing. And uh, above all else, enjoy what you're doing. Enjoy being in the garden and the remainder of summer and the best part of, uh, or the better weather of the autumn. Till next time, bye for now.